Welcome to Big Blend Radio, everybody. Uh, you're listening to, well, you just listened to Beauty in the Abyss, and uh, that is the final track off of the brand new album out by Pepino D'Agostino, and uh, this is his sixth album, and it's called Connexion. Now, I, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I encourage you to go to his website, Pepino D'Agostino. Dot com and to learn more about the album, but also it's out for pre-order right now on Amazon and iTunes, and we're very excited to have him join us on today's Big Blend Radio Show. Welcome, Pepino. Thank you for having me, Lisa and Nancy. Hey, it is wonderful to have you here, and uh, congratulations on on your. It's is this the sixth album, or it's the first CD in six years? That's that's the correct one there. That's yeah. How yes, many, how it many? is the, yes? No, go ahead. Well, this is actually my 18th uh, album, Whoa. and oh. it's the first, it's the first um, solo CD in six years, but I've done uh, CDs in between, except they were not solo records. Mm. Uh, so this one is my very first uh, solo CD in six years, although in this CD connection. The, the uh, you know you'll find also two duets with my dear friend Steph Burns, electric guitarist mm. Steph Burns. Mm. This is a beautiful, deeply mm. beautiful album, um, and you know so be- listen, you know Beauty and the Abyss to me is just it's beautiful, relaxing. It's a it's a wonderful close to the album, but then you also have songs on there like Headcase, and you're like, okay, I know that feeling too. Is that a Monday morning song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after drinking uh, three cappuccinos, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that per- <laughs> that particular one is more of a, a showcase of technique and rapid fire licks, you know. Mm. Um, but but and so it's really um, yeah, it's more technical uh, and is uh, kind of a show off. It, well, I, I'm, it's got like a, it's almost like you're playing bass in there too, like a bass guitar, like a slapping bass guitar in there, mm-hmm. technique-wise. Yeah, it's a, uh, that's a, it's a, it's an acoustic guitar. I, I play a six-string acoustic uh, guitar, so mm-hmm. I play that piece on a six-string acoustic guitar. But um, you know, I, um, I'm. Um, I decided to put that piece, which is kind of a, a unique, it's very different from all the others. It's not very melodic. It's just strictly kind of a high energy uh, kind of piece. But I, I thought that was kind of a, almost like a joke. Because today, um, there's a lot of technical players that can play, you know, 200 miles an hour, but they they don't express much melodically. So it was mm-hmm. kind of a little bit like, okay, I can do that too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So I know you you tour quite a bit, don't you? Yeah, yes, I do. I do. I so tour do you... um probably I play maybe 60 to 90 concerts worldwide a year. So I don't I'm, oh. I'm not on the road a lot. I have colleagues that are constantly touring. I do not want to do that. Um so I'm just, you know, 60 to 90 concerts a year. Hmm. And I know you were also did some work uh, with the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which is an amazing, uh, just an amazing organization with what they do for conservation. Uh, but some of your music was used um, in their documentary, right? Yeah, is uh, that documentary is played every day at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Is uh, you know in, in that beautiful place they have a, a, a movie theater. You can see documentaries in a rapid succession succession and uh, i they asked me to uh, do the entire soundtrack of one of their uh, documentaries there is called journey to baja and it's mm. basically the the journey of um, uh, the gray whales the brown pelicans and the sea lion that go that they go you know to baja california uh, after a, a journey of you know i don't know 5000 miles from Alaska, I think, down mm. there to deliver the cuffs, and and so it was an, a wonderful experience for me to 
associate you know, and compose music for that project. People can actually, if they go there, which I highly recommend because it's an amazing uh, place, uh, you know, they can go there and see this, you know, what they have there, including my, you know, this documentary journey to Baja. Mm. Mm. Nice. And you, speaking of Baja, mm-hmm. one of my favorite uh, songs on the album, Conexion, is Mexican sunrises. Uh, you know, Nancy and I used to live um, just south mm-hmm. of Ensenada in a place called La Bufadora. It's a blowhole mm-hmm. out there. And there is something about, you know, just, just you know, being on the coast and the mm-hmm. beauty of the – it's just beautiful. But at the same time, you're playing on there. Um, I feel you've, you've, you've kind of grasped that, that Mexican style where it's, it's – I don't want to say uh, – it's kind of relaxed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The way you the notes are played, it's like not out of tune, but it has that syncopation. That's you, I, it's it's Mexican. <laughs> it's Mexican music. Well, you know, it's interesting, Lisa, that you mentioned that because that piece uh, is actually on this on that soundtrack that I did for the Monterrey Aquarium. I mm. um, in the uh, soundtrack, there's more instruments. Uh, so I decided to create uh, a solo guitar version and call it Mexican Sunrises. Uh, so it's it's interesting because yeah, it's a very relaxed melodic um, piece that actually, if you listen to that, you uh, and close your eyes, you can picture yourself on one of those beautiful Mexican uh, beaches there. In fact, you know, I'm going there in. Uh, in two weeks, I'm, I'm performing oh. in Mexico, in Loreto. Oh, um, Ooh, nice. And so, <laughs> so mm. yeah, I love Mexico. And I definitely, uh, with that song, I try to bring back uh, that kind of Mexican flavor. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the way to say it. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Now, are you, you know, listening to the album, I feel that you're very, you know, we're talking about Monterey Bay Aquarium, but I feel like you're very connected to the natural world, like nature. Does nature inspire you in your melodies? Definitely. You know, one of my earliest songs is called Grand, Grand Canyon. And, mm. um, and, and is, of course, that's one of the most beautiful places on earth. Mm. And I was there, and, you know, at first, uh, you know, a place so majestic and beautiful like that one, you can't do anything else but just be in awe uh, about how gorgeous is this planet. And then these, you know, this kind of feelings kind of a, um, work inside myself. And then somehow I try to translate in music, you know, those emotions that I felt when I visited the Grand Canyon, for instance, or Costa Rica or other places in the world. And yes, to answer your question, yes, nature, it's a, you know, it's a sacred temple that can inspire people to paint or, or write music or create art. And it's our connection to what's really important and sacred, you know. So absolutely, mm-hmm. Mu- uh, you know, nature inspires me all, very often. Mm. I was going to say, Nancy, I think mm. Nancy, when she was listening to your album, she wanted to get her paintbrushes out. Yeah, <laughs> I want to paint underwater no. scenes. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I, I, I wanted would be to kind of... <laughs> Go ahead, different. sorry. Yeah, but I was going to say, I wanted to paint underwater scenes somehow with corals and those bright colored fishes and... I don't know. That's what came to my mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. That's, that would be lovely. You know, yeah, that if would you be, do that uh, by listening to my music, you know, that would be very, uh, would be an honor, and I would love to see what you can come up with, Nancy. <laughs> do it, Nancy. <laughs> oh, yeah. with, you, you know, she doesn't paint anymore, but she is a wildlife artist. And, that, you know, I'd, I'd love to see you perform while someone paints at the same time. That would be amazing. As a, just a... Mm. Well, that's a concept. Thank you. That's yeah, it's, it's an, it is a good concept because I, mean, I always had music on while I painted, and it definitely um, affects you with your, your um, how fast you paint, 
and um, the colors and at least for me, you know, and, and because I'm always zeroed in on nature, I always go to the animal world, the natural world, and I just find it it's connected to me to music. Mm. Very connected. So, mm-hmm. it's well, maybe one day on. we can uh, we can actually do it one day. Who knows? Maybe and our, you never our know. path our path will cross. Mm. Well, you're you're in such a beautiful area too, up in the Bay Area, where you know where we, we've traveled. As, you know, we mentioned before we started recording this. You know, we travel to parks. You know, that's documenting parks um, for our Love Your Parks tour, and that's something that. You know, we find that music is is a big part of parks, whether people perform outside, are mm-hmm. inspired by the natural world. Have you, do you do any performances where you're outside in nature, like the Red Rocks and things like that, places like that? Uh, you mean organized concerts? No, yeah, when you go and perform, you know, or do you just go and take your guitar outside ever where you, you know, to be out and not always, you know, because, there's a lot of performances there in theaters and places like that, but then there's the outside, performing outside. It's different. Different for oh, them. Oh, yeah. No, no. Well, I don't usually do this, but um, I don't usually perform outdoors. Um, mm. But uh, I, I've done it a few times. Like uh, I played at the, uh, the Strawberry Music Festival, mm. which was held in, in Yosemite years yes. ago. And there was... Mm. And it was amazing to play for 5,000 people and, and having the, you know, the kind of amazing uh, nature around me. And the second time was in uh, one of the most beautiful places in Italy, in the mountains. Uh, the mountains, uh, the, these mountains are up north the, the, um, on the border with Austria, and they're called Dolomites. And mm. I remember mm. playing at this festival and uh and in the background you could see this in, uh, majestic beautiful mountains the dolomites and you know it, it was amazing somebody actually took pictures of me and uh <laughs> it, i was really i was in heaven as i was mm. playing there oh well, it sounds nice. beautiful yeah what what led you to pick up the guitar is it something you uh played when you were a child yeah, I started when I was 10. And one of my cousins uh, played the guitar, and I I was um, invited to go see him, and I fell in love with, with the instrument, the sound, and looking at his fingers playing, and just the idea of playing for other people and bring joy to the people around you. That was mm. the, the main factor. And then, you know, my cousin clearly <laughs> was... Uh, you know, was uh, moved by my interest. I was only 10, and he convinced my mother to buy a guitar, and so that's how I started. Oh. Nice. Now, mm-hmm. you play the acoustic guitar. Uh, do you have a specific, you know, st- guitar that you play all the time, or do you have, like, a big guitar collection? You know, tell us a little bit more about your instruments. Well, I do have a big guitar collection of guitar, electric guitars, classical, nylon strings. Uh, when mm. I perform, I play a guitar that I actually design with mm. um, a company in Canada. Uh, wow. The luthier, uh, the, the builder, his name is uh, Robert Godin, G-O-D-I-N, Robert mm-hmm. Godin from Canada, Montreal. And I designed this guitar uh, 25 years ago. And oh. um, it's actually this guitar, that's what I play. And, and this guitar actually is, um, is sold all over the world. And so it's, a, it's an honor for me to have this instrument. And, and I'm so close to this beautiful acoustic guitar. So mm. it's a signature model. People can find out if they go... If, you, if they go to seagullguitars.com, seagull like the bird, seagullguitars.com. Mm-hmm. So do you name your guitar? Do they have like names? Yeah, well, it's the Pepino D'Agostino uh, signature model. <laughs> but do you give it a name? Like, do you, you know, like I named my car. <laughs> do you know? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, I actually don't. Um, you know, uh 
she, you know, she doesn't name me. She just play with me, <laughs> and I play with her. We don't know. We don't have to. We don't have to. But it's a she. We don't have to. Yeah, it's a she. Definitely, she's 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 my guitar, and I'm oh. her her partner. <laughs> so there you are. There, there. Well, you know, and it's interesting, you know, guitars. You know, there's a there. I played I, not anywhere that anybody needs to hear. I played guitar, but it was. It's um, it's one of those you you need to play every day, and you you just it it changes all the time. And I played uh, steel string versus nylon, and they each have such a different sound. And steel, it's 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 hard on your fingers. I mean, <laughs> do, you, do you like get new calluses all the time? Is there any tips you can give for aspiring guitarists on how to keep their fingers strong, especially with steel with steel strings? Well, the calluses, uh, they, you know, they, at, at first, when you play steel string, it's difficult. It's more, it's harder than playing mm-hmm. nylon, nylon strings. But after the first few weeks, you know, people build up calluses and then you don't, you don't feel it anymore because you have these calluses. The main thing for me is actually my, uh, my picking hand. Uh, because uh, if you use your natural nails, uh, you will break them uh, because the steel strings could, you know, really um, uh, mm-hmm. ruin your natural nails because, you know, it's a hard string. So what I do, I use uh, acrylic nails on my right hand. So mm-hmm. uh, my fingers, I just go to those, you know, nail salons and, I put this, you know, this gel, this acrylic nails, and and so that that that's what I used, uh, and I've been doing this for 35 years, and wow. and it works. Um, so, but the 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 left hand, yeah, you're right, Lisa. I mean, at first can be can be hard, but if you if you can stick with it for like two or three weeks, then then it will go away. Mm. The, do you, you ever know, the, teach? Because you build, yeah. Oh yeah, I do teach, and there's actually, I created online courses with this company called True Fire, uh, True Fire, and if you go there, TrueFire.com, and search for my name, you will see my two, you know, guitar courses. One is for beginners, and one is for mm. advanced players. Um, and so, yeah, no, I do teach, and I actually. I also created these events. Uh, are uh, these are uh, music retreats, and I work oh. with you know I work with uh, jazz guitarists, uh, fingerstyle guitarists, but also fiddle players, ukulele players, classical guitarists, and people wow. can find out about my retreats if they go to musicworldretreats.com. Wow. Cool. I want to go. I know that's cool. <laughs> I want to go. Yeah, we have one uh, actually starting this next weekend with two of the top mandolin players in the world. Wow. Um, it's 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 sold out, but these events sell out most of them. And so, yeah, if you want to find out, just let me know. Musicworldretreats.com. dot com. One thing I wanted to say about that is, you know, because I was doing a lot of songwriting that before we did all these travels and all that, um, writing songs, and I was using my guitar to, you know, craft the melodies and, and the rhythms and everything, but my my singing and my songwriting skills are are far better than my guitar playing, and that, to me, it was like, it was important to learn guitar to improve songwriting. Do you see that happening with, with students that um, they're trying to improve, maybe not to be like, you know, the best guitarist, but to really hone their craft as a songwriter? Yeah, I'll tell you more about that. We do actually, uh, we do um, organize a yearly singer-songwriters um, retreat uh, here in Benicia. And we, uh, we had uh, David Wilcox. Um, he's a, an amazing singer-songwriter from uh, Asheville, no, Asheville, North Carolina. And mm. he's also a great guitarist. And also we have uh, a vocal coach. Um, so people can improve their guitar playing, their uh, songwriter skills, and also work 
on the the guitar skill. So it's mm. all it's all together. And uh, yes, I think people um, typically so, uh, singer songwriters they technically they play just a few finger styles, uh, you know, uh, alternating bass uh, techniques. But there's mm-hmm. so much more, and I see people just. Uh, growing just within a weekend they learn new patterns with the right hand mm. and also new chords because you know the typical singer songwriter they use you know the you know simple folk chords yeah. but when people start learning new voicings and new chords new keys new te- you know new right hand techniques i can see uh, that that can influence your actually your your writing which are mm-hmm. learning tech, you know, learning the techniques of the guitar can actually improve your your writing too. Mm. That's that's mm-hmm. what I was thinking is, you know, we we get limited into what instrument we're playing, and you know, as a as a you could be great at lyrics, but you and melodies you're going to limit your melody if you don't yeah. learn the instrument. You know, I remember like Stevie Nicks and and you know, and Lindsey Buckingham. And I think he's a fantastic guitarist too. He, um, she needed him, you know, to to help her with her songs because of not being. And I think she knows how to play the piano now and everything. But it's important to learn to learn your instruments just to increase and, and improve your songwriting. And that's something I do want to talk about. Um, your song, Stammy Vicino. Did I say that correctly? <laughs> I'm impressed with you. Yay. Yay! I get a star. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning. I love this. I love this new language is for me here. So, Stami Vicino, tell what what does that mean? Um, Stami Vicino means uh, um, be close to me, stay close to me. Oh. That, so then yeah. we got to do Vicino. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. So that's an interesting story about that. I'll try to to make it short. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're here. Um, for for a moment, for a moment, there was a, quite a, just a moment of silence. So anyway, the, that song "Stammi Vicino" started as an instrumental piece. Um, I was uh, in Ireland, and I was impressed by that beautiful, you know, country, and I wrote uh, this instrumental song. And then my friend and brother, <laughs> Steph Burns, one one of the best electric guitarists on the planet. Mm. He um, he said that, you know, we can actually make a song with lyrics with what you got, but we need to maybe add a bridge, add uh, one more uh, section. And I said, okay, let's do it. So then um, the song was done as a demo, and he gave it to his boss. Now, his boss is Vasco Rossi, which is fairly unknown in... Uh, outside of Italy, but Vasco Rossi is one of the greatest and most successful uh, rock stars in Italy. And so um, we waited eight years, and then this rock star uh, basically wrote lyrics on on this song, and the song became Stanley Vicino and became the number one song in the rock charts in Italy. Wow. Uh, in two, <laughs> like, this this wow. was an in, a very interesting uh, story. Uh, so basically, you know, that song was all over the radio, and it was, you know, it was. They made a video of this. So that simple guitar instrumental song became, an you know, a rock song, a uh, ballad, and. And uh, I was, uh, <laughs> and I got a nice, nice big check, a royalty <laughs> oh, check out of that. <laughs> good. <laughs> well, music, good. It, it, yeah, it was great. Let me tell you. So if people <laughs> want, they can go online and check the the official videos of uh, Stanley Vicino, and then they can see what I'm talking about. Oh wow! Well, let's play it uh, now from your new album, and and it's Connexion. Am I saying that correctly? <laughs> I think it's pronounced that way, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. I'm just making sure. But uh, here it is, everyone. Stemi Vicino. Here it is.
everyone. You're listening to Big Blend Radio, and you just heard Stammy Vicino, and uh, that is by Pepino D'Agostino and his new album. Uh, you can pre-order it right now. Uh, go to his website or go to Amazon, iTunes. Uh, it is out now, Conexion. Um, well, you can pre-order it, but it will be out officially. Uh, is it April? In April, right, Pepino? Yeah, yes, Lisa. It's April 3rd is the official release, but people can pre-order their copy, which will be autographed by me. So. Oh, see, that's right. even better. Mm-hmm. That is such a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> oh, I song. I feel like a, like a floating, like like yes. an eagle over the ocean. Exactly. You know where it is, Lisa? It's the Gila Cliff Dwelling. Ooh. Remember we were there early in the morning, and we could we were higher than where the birds were flying, and so they would come off the cliff and soar beneath where we were. So we're looking at the tops of them flying. Yeah. Then they go down to the bottom of the canyon for water and come back up. So they were all flying at once, like, and that's what that's where that's where I went. Oh wow, <laughs> Sky Islands. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the Grand Canyon, mm-hmm. you know. But you said that that was um, in Ireland for you, the inspiration for that. Yeah, the you know the main melody was yeah I I came up with that melody. I was in Ireland. Mm-hmm. Yes, I was touring and. You know, uh, at night after traveling and playing the gigs, um, mm. when I, you know, when I was back at my hotel, somehow mm-hmm. my, you know, my imagination, my brain, I came up with that melody in Ireland. Yes. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful country beautiful. for sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. I know. We haven't, we haven't done Ireland yet, but we will. Yeah, <laughs> we, we'll get there. We've done England and Scotland, <laughs> but we didn't get to... We didn't get to Ireland, but that that'll be on our list uh, for the next one. Well, this is you know it's so exciting about having your album out uh, coming out and High Plains Guitar. I know we're going to play and close with that song. Uh, this song to me, it's this is fun. Tell us about the the background of this because it is it's a fun song. Thank you. Um, well, you know I'm a um, I, 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 I was always uh, a big fan of Ennio Morricone. Ennio Morricone mm-hmm. is probably the, the most well-known movie soundtrack com- Italian composer uh, of our times. You know, he wrote over 500 movie soundtracks, and you know, mm-hmm. he, he won an Oscar for you know uh, for best soundtrack a few years ago, and he has a Life Achievement Oscar. Ennio Morricone has been one of my guitar heroes. I mean, one of my music musical heroes and composers. And uh, and the the um, the other inspiration for this piece uh, is the late uh, Paco de Lucia, which mm. uh, many consider the best flamenco players that ever lived. So these two uh, people were uh, behind the inspiration for this song. If you listen to this song, it's like being back in the western of the '60s, you know, with Clint Eastwood <laughs> and. <laughs> And there's a little bit of flamenco technique, especially in the beginning, but the music develops almost like a movie soundtrack of one of those western. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, this is this is what you know. This is the musical inspiration behind this piece. Ah, oh, we're gonna play that for sure. And before you go, I do want to touch on "Dancing with Shadows." Tell us about that song because that is a, as another I, this whole album. I wish we could just sit here all day and play it. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. everybody. Just go get it. <laughs> but dancing with Thank shadows. So Tell much. us about that. Okay, that one. Um, so the inspiration for that, the musical inspiration, was uh, thinking about the 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 ballrooms in the city where I grew up in Italy, Torino, mm-hmm. Turin. Um, I remember, you know, when I, as you know, as a teenager seeing you know the uh you know people older than me going in these ballrooms and 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 dance and i was you know looking at them uh, all dressed <laughs> up and now you know going dancing with their partners it was just a good feeling you know of joy and and so uh but obviously now these places are gone and during mm. that time they were dancing music that you know people had to stay close to each other like doo wop music you know the music mm-hmm do up from the fifties and that kind of, uh, music. Um, I always loved that piece, uh, sleepwalk, which was played on a lap steel guitar with slide with the slide, um, mm-hmm. very famous piece called sleepwalk. So that was the musical inspiration for that piece. And, uh, technically it's not very easy to play cause I'm bending those strings 
a lot. And so it really is a, <laughs> it's kind of a, a difficult on your left hand. But, um, you know, I have good feelings about that piece, and I'm getting very good comments about Dancing with Shadows. So this is the title, Dancing with Shadows, because those ballrooms are no longer there, you know. Oh, yeah. oh that's mm-hmm. sad, huh? It is sad. That's what, that was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, it, um, <laughs> yeah. it, it reminds me of, like, my, my, um, my grandmother. <laughs> she liked to get dressed up and go dancing. That was a big deal for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it was right. It's people dance close to, to each other, you know, and, and now yeah. they don't do that so much. Well, there's a whole yeah. other style of dancing close to each other. Let's <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is this is such a it's a beautiful album. I'm excited for everyone to get thank it you. and hear it. Um, and we're going to play High Plains Guitar. And uh, we want to thank the National Parks Arts Foundation uh, for sponsoring today's show. They are an incredible organization uh, where artists and musicians, poets, painters, actors, anything, if you, no matter what you do in the arts. Uh, you can apply to be an artist in residence uh, for in a national park for a, a full month, and so they have residencies like the Dry Tortugas, and uh, you know you can have your own island in Florida in the Florida Ooh. Keys for a month, or you could go to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, Chaco Canyon in northern New Mexico. You know, Pepino, I think you should yeah. do this. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you're going to post the info, so I can use certainly a month where I just. You know, just a, being in a beautiful place and bright new music. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sure. that would be perfect. Yes, that's what mm. they do. You go and, I mean, Hawaii volcanoes. Mm. I mean, it's you have your own house. They give you a house that's right outside the park with an ocean view. They put a dance floor in. They have a recording studio in there. I'm just saying. Yeah. Really? And they have the best wow. coffee, apparently. So, oh, I'm it's, Italian. I love coffee. Can you send me a link to this? I'm really I will. curious now. Absolutely. <laughs> I will for sure. You got and my everyone, number, the website, right? <laughs> ev- the website, everyone, is nationalparksartsfoundation.org, and we interview um, their artists every first Friday on Big Blend Radio, so keep up with us there. And, of course, keep up with us at bigblendradio.com and keep up with Pepino on his website, pepinodogostino.com. So thank you so much for joining us, Pepino. It's been a real pleasure. The pleasure, the pleasure is mine. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, here it is, High Plains Guitarra. <laughs> 